So we're going to start with this power series um, solution to a differential equation. So let's say I have this, whoops, uh, y double prime minus xy prime minus y equals zero. And so in order to solve this differential equation, I'm going to start by assuming that my y, my function y, can be written as in the form of a power series. So we'll kind of do this over to the side. So we're going to assume that y can be written of the form an x to the n like that. Well, what does that mean? That means a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed plus a4x to the fourth plus a5x to the fifth plus a6x to the sixth and so on. Um, so in that case y prime is going to be what? Well um, let's look at this over here on the right hand side. So the derivative of a0 with respect to x is 0 so I'll just have a1 plus 2a2x plus 3a3x squared plus 4a4x to the third plus 5a5x to the fourth and so on. So what is that in summation notation? Well if I look at this I'm really instead of starting at n equals 0 I can start at n equal 1 say And I have a n times n, and then I'll have x to the n minus 1, right? So when n is 1, I just have a 1 times 1. And when n is 2, I have a 2 times 2, x to the 2 minus 1, so x to the first. When n is 3, I have this, and n equals 4, I have that term, and so on. Okay, and what about y double prime? Well, uh, let's go ahead over here to the right and take the derivative. The derivative of a1, again, is going to be 0. So then I'll have 2 times 1, a2x to the 0. So, sorry, I won't write that x there. And then I'll have plus 3 times 2, a3 x to the first plus 4 times 3 a4 x squared plus 4 5 times 4 a5 x cubed and so on. So what is this? I'm starting at n equal 2 and I'll have um, n times n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. And 2 to infinity. So that's uh, one way I could uh, index those. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three things here and I'm going to plug them into that differential equation. All right, so there are kind of two ways of thinking about this. Um, I'm going to use these, uh, the stuff here on the right-hand side to plug in for my y, y prime, and y double prime, just so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then I'll do the same thing just using the sigma notation. So if I have 2, if I plug in y double prime, I'll have y double prime, which I'll put in these parentheses, minus x times y prime, which I'll put here in these parentheses, minus y equals 0. And so, oh, sorry. Sorry, that y, I'm going to write out what y is, too, also. There we go. Okay, so for y double prime, I'll have 2 times 1, a2, plus 3 times 2, a3, x, plus 4 times 3, a4 x squared plus and so on right and then for the x y prime I'm going to put y prime in there so I'll have a1 plus 2 a2 x plus 3 a3 x squared plus 4 a4 x cubed plus blah 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 
And then for the um, y, I'll have a naught plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed plus a4x to the fourth plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, all of that. And so what I want to do is I notice that all of this stuff here on the left-hand side needs to add up to give me zero. So in other words, I can start by looking at all of the constant terms, the terms without x's in them, and all of those constant terms need to add to zero. So let's start by looking at the constant terms. So if I look at the constant terms, I get um, 2a2, and now if I look here, there are no constant terms here because everything's multiplied by x, right? And then I look over here and I have a constant term a0. So 2a2 minus a0 needs to be equal to 0. And that's all the coefficients of the constant terms, the terms without an x in them. So what I get from that is I get that a2 is equal to 1 half a0. And then now I can look at the x terms and compare the coefficients there. So for the x terms, I have 3 times 2a3 in that one. And then for this one, I have minus a1. And then also I have another minus a1. So if that equals 0, then that tells me that a3 can be written as 2a1 divided by 3 times 2. Okay. And then, um, let me clean up this here. Okay. And then I can look at the x squared terms. And if I look at those, I see, okay, so if the x squared terms, so I've already used I've used that one, I've used that one, I've used that one, I've used that one, and that one. Okay, so I'm at the x squared term. So, um, so I'll have uh, 4 times 3, a4. That's times x squared. And then I'll have minus 2a2. And then minus another a2 equals zero. So I'm looking at the coefficients of the x squareds. So what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that a4 can be written this way as, um, so I'll have negative 3a2, I can add that over. Um, so I'll have 3a2 divided by 4 times 3, which is equal to, um, a2 can be written in terms of a0, so I'll have um, 3a0 over 4 times 3 times 2. So that looks like a factorial there on the bottom. Now let's look at the x cubed terms. And what do we have? So for the x cubed terms, um, okay, so I've used that x squared term, I've used that x squared term, and that x squared term. Okay, so for the x cubed terms, oh, here, I don't have an x cubed term, but I know it's there, so I, I can write it out. So it's going to be uh, 5 times 4 a5 minus 3a3 and then minus a3. So what does that imply? That implies that a5 is going to be equal to um, 4a3 over 5 times 4, which is equal to, let's see, a3 was 2a1 over 3 times 2. So we'll have 4 times 2a3 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Now you're starting to see the recurrence relation here? Seeing this relationship between um, the terms here. So can we guess here if I were to do the x to the fourth terms? This should give me a formula for a6. So I can think about what I've seen previously for the other even ones. It looks like the even ones 
end up, oops, oops, that's A1. A Sorry, that's an A1 there. Let me erase that. Ooh, okay. A1. There we go. Looks like the even terms depend on A0, while the odd ones depend on A1. So if I were guessing, I would say this is probably going to be 5A0 over... Um, Let's see, so that's going to be 6 factorial. Yeah, that's just my guess from the way the pattern's looking. Let's see if I can show it, okay? So we're going to show it. This is my guess. Okay, so if I look at the x to the fourth terms, I'm going to have fa, uh, sorry. Um, so I'm going to have 6 times 5, a 6, minus... 4a4 four four minus a4 equals 0. And so that gives me that a6 is going to be equal to 5a4 over 6 times 5. Well, what is a4? A4 is 3A0. Ooh, I'm missing something here. So I'll have 5 times 3A0 over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Right, so I missed something there when I was doing my guess. It's not just a 5A0. It actually ends up being 5 times 3A0. So it looks like I have these odd numbers showing up multiplied as products on the top and then I have a 6 factorial on the bottom. Okay, so we got that fixed. So I'll erase that. Okay. And so then if I look to the x to the fifth terms, I'll see what's going on for a7. I think you can probably already tell what's it going to be. Well, a7 is going to be one of these odd ones, so I'll have 6 times 4 times 2, a1, over 7 factorial. And then a8 is going to be, okay, <laughs> is going to be uh, one of the even ones. So I'll have odd numbers multiplied together on top. So 7 times 5 times 3, a0, over 8 factorial. And so you can start to kind of see what's going to happen here. And so you can see it kind of breaks into two groups here. The ones that have the A0 in them and the ones that have the A1 in them. And so these end up being our two solutions. Um, and that makes sense because we know we have a second order differential equation. And so we should have two linearly independent solutions that are going to span our solution space. And so if we write up what those solutions are, we can write up that our solutions are, I'm going to write, um, I don't know, you want to write y, y0 and y1, I don't know, or y1 and y2. We can write y1 and y2, that's fine. So let's say y1 is going to be the, the even ones, right? So y1 is going to be a0 plus a2x squared plus a4x to the fourth plus a6x to the sixth and so on. And so what is that? Well, that is a0 plus a2 is a0 over 2 plus a4 is 3a0 over 4 factorial plus a6 is 5 times 3a0 over 6 factorial. Oops, sorry, I left my x's out. x to the 4th, x to the 6th. And so that's the first four terms there. I can keep going if I want to. So a8 is going to be 7 times 5 times 3a0 over 8 factorial, x to the 8th, and so on. Okay. So that's my y1. That's my first solution. Oh, 
it's not writing Y1 here. That's my Y1. And so for Y2, I'm going to use the odd powers. That's my Y1. So for Y2, I'm going to use the odd powers here, okay? So I'm going to use, it's going to be A1 plus A3X cubed plus A5X to the fifth plus A7X to the seventh, and so on. Right? So that's the first four terms there. Now let's put in what A3, A5, and A7 are in terms of A1. So I'll have Y2 is going to, oh, sorry, it's A1X. So we'll have um, A1X plus, what's A3? A3 is 2A1 over 3 factorial X cubed plus, what's A5? A5 is 4 times 2 A1 over 5 factorial x to the fifth plus what is a7 it's a uh, six times four times two a1 over seven factorial x to the seventh and so on. okay so these are our two linearly independent well they ha we haven't proven yet that they're linearly independent so this one uses the even powers my y1 and my y2 here uses the odd powers now it kind of looks like we have a sine and cosine thing going on here. Um, so probably, uh, now it's not exactly sine or cosine because we have these extra like threes and fives and sevens and uh, even an odd power showing up in the, in the top and bottom. But it's probably like a hyperbolic cosine or something. I, I tried to look up the, uh, uh, I tried to look up the uh, summation for those, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, so what we want to do now is we want to use the Ronskian to show that these two are linearly independent solutions. So basically what the Ronskian does is if there is an x value for which the Ronskian is zero, then, um, then we can say that the two functions are linearly independent. So kind of a convenient value of x is x equals zero. So if we can plug in x equals zero, or we can take the Rons take the um, the Ronskian at x equals zero, and it's non-zero, then that's kind of nice because all the x's go away if we plug in x equals zero. So let's let's try that. So what is y one of zero? Well, y one of zero is a naught. What is y one prime of zero? Well, if I take the derivative of y one. The a naught drops off, but then I still have x's because I have a my next lowest power of x is an x squared, and if I take the derivative of x squared, then I'm still going to have an x in my derivative. So everything will have an x uh, multiplied by it in my y1 prime. So I know y1 of zero is going to be zero. I'm going to have what if I plug in zero for x? I'll have zero. What about y2? Well, if I look at y2 of zero, now y2 the lowest power of x is x to the first. If I plug in zero, everything has an x multiplied by it, so I'm going to get zero. But what if I look at y2 prime of zero? Well, if I take the derivative of y2, um, I'll have an a1, I'll have a constant term. So when I plug in zero into y2 prime, I'll get a1. And if I look at, the Ronskian says, um, so if I look at the Ronskian of y1 and y2 evaluated at zero, I'm going to get this determinant, a1, 0, 0, or sorry, a0, 0, 0, a1. Right? I plug in those values into my Ronskian, and I get that it's a0, a1. So that's non-zero as long as a0 and a1 are non-zero. Okay? And in these, we're not assuming that our a0 and a1 have to be zero. So this is non-zero Ronskian. So since my Ronskian is non-zero, that means that y1 and y2 are linearly independent. Hi, Reagan. Hi, Reagan. Okay, that's it.